Hello, my friends. A very good morning. And may this be a magnificent Saturday in your life. And God, through the Holy Spirit, may come to conduct towards a life according to His will, which is His govern in your life. When we seek the kingdom of God, as we said yesterday, in reality, we are seeking God's govern, which means to do the will of our Lord, our King. And this is to seek the kingdom of God first. And it's important for you to have this conscience always, every day, every hour, every minute, every second. Is it the will of God for me to do this? Is it God's will? My Father, is it your will that I'll go towards this direction? What do you want from me? And the Holy Spirit, for sure, will guide you. And obviously, you will be seeking the kingdom of God. You will be doing the will of God. And obviously, if by any chance you are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can be sure that you will be. Why? Because God is faithful and He will not let you down. Now, I would like to... You know, tonight I woke up with a song a hymn that we used to sing many years ago when I was still a teenager in the beginning of my journey with God. I don't know if you've heard that song. In life we have so much pain. Not everything is a blue sky. You who started he started in the faith years back, you remember this song really well. So, this song made me remember what the Apostle Paul said when he said the following, For this is commendable, for this is commendable if because of conscience toward God, conscience toward God, not toward men, not toward people, because of conscience toward God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. <laughs> and it's what's been happening, isn't it? For example, when we show the testimonies of people talking about fake news and people who hated me, and I didn't even know that, right? But God brought them to, to us, not only for them to be saved, but also for us to know how painful it is to endure grief because of righteousness and faith in the Lord Jesus. So here, Peter is saying the following, it's commendable that somebody, perhaps you who are watching me right now, because of your conscience toward God, you have to keep your conscience clean, pure, honest, sincere, and perfectly sane. So it's necessary, it's pleasing, better saying, that because of this conscience toward God, we will suffer wrongfully. They will suffer injustices, they will suffer slanders, they will suffer hate, persecution, whether in the house or at work or from the husband, the wife or the parents. 
they suffer, suffer, and suffer wrongfully. He said, this is commendable. Peter says that this is commendable. Now you can imagine that when a person suffers wrongfully, immediately their flesh, their human flesh wants to react or pay back, seek revenge, isn't it? But God says there that to him vengeance belongs to. So vengeance belongs exclusively to God. Do you want to walk with God? Do you want to submit to the kingdom of God, to the govern of God, to the authority of God? Do you want to be in the kingdom of God? Then, my dear friend, be ready, be ready, my friend, to receive, let's say, to suffer wrongfully. As he says here, suffering wrongfully, wrongfully. It's commendable. And he says more. Te pay attention. For what credit is it if when you are beaten for your, for your faults? Which means, what glory is there if you choose evil? and then you reap what is evil, isn't it? It's right, it's fair. You did wrong, you're going to reap what is wrong. You sowed potatoes, you're going to reap potatoes, no doubt. You sowed thorns, you're going to reap thorns. But when you do good, pay attention, but when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. God is glorified when we are persecuted, we go through injustices, we are defamed, we are arrested, when we are slandered, when we are buffeted, when we are slandered, and so on. Everything that the unbelievers do against those who truly are living in the kingdom of God. It's good. It's good for those who are living in the kingdom of God. Do you know why? Because when we do what is good and receive evil in return, and we continue to do good, then God is glorified in us. God is sanctified in our lives because he says there that this is what Jesus did. Jesus was buffeted. Actually, he was arrested wrongfully. He was betrayed. He was placed or taken to court, accused him wrongfully. They brought false witnesses against him. He suffered and suffered and suffered. And afterwards, he was buffeted. They spat on his face. They beat him. But they beat with whips that had blades on it, right on the edge, in a way that it would cut his flesh. He groaned in his flesh and in the spirit. He suffered in his soul to the point that he said, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death, which means Jesus suffered. And what did he do to pay back? Absolutely nothing. There in Calvary on the cross, he said, My Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So those who persecute us, those who hate us, those who say bad things about us and they throw stones at us and they defame us, those who try and do everything, everything they can in order for us to try and seek revenge, they are poor them. They are ignorant. They don't know what they are doing. So it's normal that we 
who have been following the footsteps of Jesus, that we will also suffer. Not the same thing he suffered, obviously, but a little bit of what he suffered. Just a little bit of what, what he went through. Because this is commendable to God. Then the person asks like this, but Bishop, oh, it's pleasing to God. It pleases God that we suffer. No. But because of the injustices that we people do, the griefs that we go through in this world, He is glorified. Not because we do what is wrong and we suffer because of those wrong things. No, not, not in this case. If you do what is wrong, if you do what is unfair and you suffer, this does not glorify God. This is not pleasing to Him. But if you do what is righteous, and you are penalized because of that, this glorifies God. It's written here, for this is commendable. Let me read it again, the text. For this is commendable. Pay attention. For this is commendable. If because of conscience toward God, toward God, our conscience toward Him, not toward man, Conscience toward God, one endures grief, suffering, groaning wrongfully. For then he says, he asks, What credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults? Then it's, it's right, it's right. There is no glory in it. You did what was wrong, he was condemned. Then this, there is no glory to God there. There is no glory to God. Now, if a person is righteous, they are walking in righteousness, they are doing what is right, they are praying, they are fasting, they are following their faith, obeying the word of God, they are submitting themselves to the will of God, day after day after day, but then they still suffer grief, then... This is pleasing to God. It's here. But if when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. So you who are watching me right now, you can sing this song, isn't it? The old song. In life we have so much suffering. Not everything is a blue sky against the pain inside your heart. There's only one way. Trust in God. He listens to your prayer. Trust in God. He will never let you down. Trust in God. The dark clouds shall go away. Oh, never doubt. But trust in God. That is the faith that makes us conquer the kingdom of heaven. My dear friend, believe in it. Faith is not only to conquer material things, to conquer personal things. Faith is to suffer grief and to remain firm in the faith until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to have, you are going to bring the bottle of water, isn't it? And you are going to receive the water here from the well, from the fountain that we have here in the temple of Solomon. May God bless you all and this water has been distributed to all over Brazil so the pastors and bishops can use that as well 
for the members of their churches. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.